Pandemics spread throughout a population insanely fast, be it through air, water supply, physical contact, or exchanging of fluids. And typically in the zombie genre, the disease of dying and reanimating as an undead cannibal is transmitted by a bite or even a scratch. Some variations occur where the disease resides in every person and activates when they die and only the bite causes death from fever, like in The Walking Dead. In 28 weeks later, any drop of blood will cause the rage virus to take over a human host in just mere moments. But in that case, it's more of a rabies-infected rage virus. And on that note, much like the infected and left for dead, but with much different results. But that begs the question, what is the virus that spread and crippled the country, maybe even the world, in just two weeks? We're going to explore what exactly is the infection in Left 4 Dead. known as the green flu or infection, the virus that ran rampant and infected a majority of the American population could be spread through contact, the air, the water, basically in any form a disease can be spread. Depending on which day of the week you're experiencing the virus that is due to mutations, a rabies-like pathogen, a pathogen basically in terms that I can understand is a cell or group of cells that can cause a disease and that is capable of infecting a majority of the population in just a two-week period. CETA, the Left 4 Dead universe's version of the CDC classified the green flu as a level 4 biohazard. Now, how severe is that? In real life, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, has four biohazard levels. Level 1 for non-infectious bacteria and cell cultures like chickenpox. Level 2 for mild diseases difficult to combat with aerosol in a lab environment like HIV, hepatitis, and Lyme disease. Level 3 for diseases that are severe or fatal but can be treated with vaccines such as West Nile, anthrax, and tuberculosis. And level 4, the worst of all, severe or fatal diseases with no known vaccination or treatment like Ebola and the disease we're doing analysis over, the green flu. For you Texans out there, it's basically like an F5 tornado on the tornado scale. As described by a doctor in the Sacrifice comic series, this virus defies anything we've ever seen. Sometimes it's airborne, sometimes it's not. It mutates daily. We're trying to cure it and we can't even pin it down. Hence why at one moment it can be airborne and the next be only susceptible through direct contact. Now with the disease that can transform a person into a homicidal zombie-like being, why refer to it as the green flu? Well, in order to prevent mass panic, the government would have to downplay the severity of the situation and cover it up to avoid mass panic which did little good for this world. Naming it a flu makes it seem less serious. The mass panic already starting on day two of the disease in the streets of Philadelphia, the guys in It's Always Sunny probably among the first people infected, cities falling in less than a week and special infected mutations beginning within 14 days in and only three weeks reaching across to Georgia. But I'm getting away from the point of this video. I'll be making different videos explaining where the infection came from on a later date. Now beyond the labeling and spread of the disease, let's examine what it actually does and how it can be prevented. The infection has its basic guidelines. Get bit, your body suffers from the disease, and then the disease takes over, making the infected individual recklessly aggressive. The common infected suffer not only from the mind-altering symptoms, but also deathly pale skin, yellow eyes with no pupil or iris, hair loss, and a weakened or weakening body structure to the point that a guitar can decapitate them with a single blow. Another interesting side note is the warped sense of reality the common infected sees through their perspective. All non-infected survivors appearing as hellish monsters in a fever dream, which may explain the hostile, head-on behavior. Unlike the special infected who tend to have more hunting and tactical instincts, there appears to be little change in body size, although it could be assumed that there is some sort of weight loss due to starvation. If there is starvation occurring, then this is indicative of a mutated hypothalamus in the brain. Furthermore, an infected person would not feel hunger, thirst, feelings, or fatigue, nor have have a regulated body temperature. Now there's some gra graffiti in dead air that backs up this statement. It also renders common sense to be thrown out the window and animalistic senses to take over. Which is why climbing any surface is a breeze, but opening a door 
Well, that's another story. That about sums it up for the common infected, unless you count uncommon infected who are purely different depending on the clothes they're wearing or the environment they're in, like the mud man being on all fours and slinging mud because they're in a swamp, and of course clowns in the carnival setting. Now as for the special infected, there isn't a solid foundation on how they mutate into such unique deadly creatures, but we do have some context clues to work with. One that might be obvious is sex-related mutations. Besides anatomical differences, the most notable difference between males and females is sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen and progesterone, which can factor into gender-specific special infected like the hunter, smoker, tank, jockey, and charger for males, and spitter and witch for females, with the only exception at the time being the boomer, with both genders available for infection. But gender specifics can only be a partial determining factor into the mutations that lead to the special infected. Another factor could be multiple virus strains, hence the extreme differences between special and common infected and the differences in strengths, weaknesses, abilities, and traits that differ between each one. The extremely low frequency of special infected is another problem with this idea. According to the pie chart below, roughly one third of the infected population becomes a special infected. Within that third, there are seven different special infected subtypes. Assuming that each subtype is a separate strain, the average infection rate for the special strains is 4.8%. That's 33.33% divided by 7. Now, multiple virus strains of the same viral species typically have comparable infection rates. In this case, you have 7 strains infecting at a rate of less than 5% and 1 strain infecting at a rate of 66%. To put it simply where we can understand it, if this is a multiple virus strain, then in theory there should be more special infected. Yep, I just went statistical all up in this BI. Besides statistics, we also have the most popular theory as to why there's differences in special infected, or these differences will refer to them as genetic and biochemical influences. These can be resulting from various substances already present in a body. That could be a huge reason. So basically, what the person was like before the infection and what their habits, mental health, and any other diseases they were experiencing beforehand. Let's go over some of these theories for each special infected. Smoker mutations may occur to someone who is or was a heavy smoker. Higher levels of cancer and or tar in the victim's lungs could inhibit complete exhalation and fill the respiratory tract with smoke. Hunter mutations may occur due to interactions with elevated levels of lactic acid in the muscles and bloodstream, which is a result of heavy exercise. And the jockey mutations may stem from someone who was confined to a wheelchair with dementia. The obvious regenerative properties of the infection could indicate a restoration of spinal cord function, giving the infected person the ability to walk again. This would explain the hunchback appearance and the emotional mania of viral brain damage, hence why the jockey is laughing maniacally at all times. <laughs> Tank mutations are possibly related to bodybuilding supplements. High levels of creatine, human growth hormone, and anabolism steroids possibly produce naturally from some damage by the infection, but it could also decrease the myostatin in the body. This protein is responsible for the suppression of muscle growth. What that basically means is without that protein, your body isn't telling itself to not make the muscles bigger. If left uncontrolled, the muscle mass would increase exponentially to the point where complex muscle movements are lost and or limited and only basic movements like climbing, thrashing, slowly throwing are possible. That's why the tank is so roided out. Now the charger mutations are similar to the tank and could mean that the charger is a hybrid version of the tank. Some steroids are used as an anti-inflammatory remedy for a rash or growth on one side of the body. An abnormal interaction with a localized and smaller concentration of steroids could have created the charger. It could also be that he's just suffering from gigantism or my favorite theory for the charger is he really liked to jack off. I mean, look at him. <laughs> On to the last three. The boomer mutations probably relate to abnormally high levels of fatty tissue or cholesterol in the bloodstream, which would also explain the large amounts of bile they produce. Bile is created to aid in the breakdown of fat. The human body's natural bile production would have been assimilated as part of the infection's mutation. This would explain why the boomer bursts when their torso opens up to be largely hollow. The space previously occupied by fatty tissue have been broken down and converted into a single enormous sack for containing and producing bile. So basically, if you got diabetes. Diabetes. 
Spitter mutations may be, in fact, due to bacterial ulcers being infected, which means basically it's just like the boomer except with stomach acid being hijacked, resulting in spitters being able to create large amounts of acid. The spitter's sagging skin and awkward walk may be caused by the acid leaking into other bodily cavities and breaking down tissues, which is why she really has no mouth and basically most of her body is just corroding due to the stomach acid that is flowing throughout her body. And last but not least, the witch mutations, which I have three different factors I want to quickly cover of why a woman would become the special infected known as the witch. The virus piggybacking on mental disorders like ADHD, anxiety, and depression, with serotonin imbalances leading to stuff like clinical depression, as we can see an example of in The Passing with the Bride Witch, who may have been left at the altar due to the infected attack or her husband leaving her at the altar. Now, the witch is also most notably sex-linked to female sex hormones, so that might be a reason it's just because she's a woman, not to be sexist or anything, don't call me that. And last off is the woman may have been anorexic before becoming infected, hence why she is so skinny compared to common infected and the special infected. Now, without the fatty tissues there, it would result in hunger pains that would cause her to cry and be irritable, which we have very much seen, and also why she is also walking around looking for easily digestible carbohydrates, such as, you guessed it, sugar. That's why we see so many witches in the Hard Rain campaign of Left 4 Dead 2. Now, I can't explain why she has claws for hands. You're going to have to come up with your own theory on that because, honestly, I think that's just the creators trying to make her look badass and more terrifying. So if you have any theories to why she has claws for hands, let me know in the comments. Now, that about covers the means of infection, and if you're not bored just yet, we got one more thing to cover. Now, how come a group of eight or um, seven survivors can be immune to it all after being clawed, beaten, biled on, and scratched? Well, it's purely hereditary. For you kiddos, that means you get it from your parents. The crash course in genes, men are made through an X and Y chromosome, while women are purely on the XX chromosome trend, with the mother and father passing on dominant and recessive genes to their offspring that determine their physical, medical, and even mental characteristics. And in the sacrifice, it is explained that the immunity is passed down through the father's genes. M the most common theory to explain is that the gene that makes people resistant is a recessive allele on the X chromosome in Zoe's case, as well as Rochelle's and any other female survivors. She must have gotten an X chromosome with the recessive gene from both her mother and her father. Zoe's mother was not resistant, meaning that she only had one X chromosome with the gene. The dominant gene on her other X chromosome would have overridden the recessive one. As explained, her father was resistant, making his death an avoidable tragedy. This would also explain why there are more male than female survivors, and why Zoe's mom became infected and her father not. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here. You're probably bored to death, or I congratulate you for making it this far. I feel like this video has been going on for a while, and that I haven't colored nearly as much as I should. Is there anything about the green flu infection that I didn't cover? Should we add more to this analysis in a part two? Make sure to stay tuned for my next analysis video. Where did the infection in Left 4 Dead come from? And as always, like, comment, and subscribe for more content. Donate to our Patreon and tune into our weekend live streams airing on YouTube either on Friday or Saturday nights, depending on my work schedule since I'm working three jobs at once now. I don't have a fucking life. Anyways, until next time, sub for more videos, keep watching, and stay well!